people always ask me, how do you make such powerful, beautiful video games with just the right amount of difficulty? And I gotta say, why well, I started young. I started at 12, and now I'm 32. So let's look at one of my old games, one of my favorites. It's called Pack, and you can see it's certainly been inspired by other games, and yet it managed to create its very own unique style of gameplay. In fact, I don't think I've seen any games do it just the way I've done it here. Maybe it's due for a reboot. Hmm. In Pack, you play as a ravenous little beast that eats all the greens. All of the greens, but he's hunted by weird lobster creatures. There, look at my art. Made all this art myself. And I was only 17 years old. I discovered Flash and I was like, hmm, yes, lobsters. <laughs> I was inspired by the real world as well. Behind my house there was a creek and they were just rebuilding, I mean redigging the creek, make it more safe. And they had a huge barrel full of lobsters. They had to relocate all the lobsters. Well, they had to take them into a barrel and then they'd be there until the, the creek was redug. I was looking at the, the lobsters, it was great. Uh-oh, I said lobsters the entire video, but they're actually like crawfish, the small ones. They're just like green small lobsters, okay? Sorry about that one. And they can swim, they have like an attack where they can dart backwards really fast if they're threatened. I don't know if lobsters can do that, but these ones can. So sorry for me continuing to say lobsters in this video. I never knew there were so many lobsters. In this little piece of creek there were like 50 lobsters and they were all in that barrel. And they weren't eaten, okay? They were brought back to the river, uh, to the creek. <laughs> that's, that's important. Ah yes, those were the good old days, before my grandparents died and then we lost the house in an inheritance struggle. Yes, what, what good old times, oh the idyllic nature of my childhood home. If only I could reclaim that glory. In pack, your goal is to eat all of the greens and once you've done that, the level ends. The controls are very unique, you don't press the arrow keys, even though I probably should have included that too, but mainly you control it with the mouse, and uh, the character just points towards the mouse, and, well, rotates towards it, turns... I guess, I guess he slowly lurps towards the mouse, okay? And that's cool, except for people think the controls might be bad, some people. Because if you hit a wall, you really slow down. And if you want to turn fast, you're not going to turn that fast. Maybe you can, like, slingshot if you place your mouse just right. You can slingshot around a corner. But usually there's, like, no fast way to turn. So you have to be very careful and deliberate with your movement. And you have to stay a fair bit away from the walls. And then there are also enemies that you have to avoid. They want to kill you. There's little lobsters or whatever the other ones are that, that lay eggs, who knows. I don't think they were supposed to be anything. I guess they're purely abstract. <laughs> Anyways, the lobsters aren't just stupid enemies that, that run around randomly. When they see you, they will come for you. So that's what the most important mechanic of the game is. When you show yourself to them, they'll come to where you've been. And you have to use that to keep them out of your way. You have to control the enemies by letting them see you. Now they're, they're obviously not highly intelligent, but they react to you, and that's more than some other games of this genre might have. But whenever they don't see you, they just bounce off the wall as if they were like a literal ball, and then they just keep going straight in whatever direction they've bounced off the wall. So there's many possibilities of you controlling them or not. I guess the, the more walls they've hit, the more chaos theory will have happened and they, they'll be unpredictable again. Now, if I were to remake this game, I'd probably make it so that they avoid the walls. So they would behave similarly to as if they had bounced off the walls, but they wouldn't actually hit their face on them. <laughs> a, a slight improvement, maybe, but it'll be hard to make them as predictable as they've been by just them being bouncing off the walls. I guess I'll have to see. Should be pretty interesting. So when I was 17 and I had just made this game, there was a, an event at the school where parents and, and kids were coming and the kids were showing off some talents that they had. Some of them were cooking food for the guests. Some of them were making music. Apparently there was some kind of cow lottery where you had to pick a tile in the grass where the cow would, would shit on. Oh, what, what good times. 
and I was there, I had my game, and like there were like some, some really young kids that were playing it, and they were having a great time. Oh, if only they could see me now. <laughs> Those kids being out there having useful skills and not playing video games all day? <laughs> what, a, what do they have to show for it? They're all married now and have kids? <laughs> Who'd want that? I'm here on the internet making video games. That's what life is all about. Ah yes, the good old times. I borrowed a computer from the school computer labs. And we had some programming courses, but they, they taught us very little. We, we, we did a Minesweeper, most people couldn't even do that one. I impressed the teacher by being able to make a Minesweeper game. Wow! Meanwhile here, look at me, I got a game in Flash that's got physics, and you can lay mines and stuff. Hey, playing Minesweeper. I mean, Minesweeper is a great game, but I learned it all myself, mostly. I already knew how to program when they started showing classes that, that teach you how to program. I was just there looking at other people learning the basics. So it all accumulated to me showing off my game pack. Showing it for all to see. Except for they were all busy having fun outside, betting where the cow would poop. And making steaks with beer. I had one of those, I thought oh, that would be gross. It was good however, even though I hate beer. I couldn't taste the beer in it, so that was nice. <laughs> My teachers were all fairly supportive, but they, but nobody really understood video games and stuff. So it was all up to me to make something of myself. Later when I started talking with Edmund, I think Pack was one of the games that, that he liked a lot. And he told me to upload it to Newgrounds. And I uploaded all my stuff to Newgrounds. I had made the games before, but I've only uploaded them all in... T well, most of them in 2006. Yeah, that's a while ago. That's right, I didn't make nine games in 2006. I only uploaded them. I made them earlier, even. The music in the game is largely consistent out of three sounds. It plays one and then two, but then two might be replaced with three by random. So, that sounds pretty pretty mundane, but then when you eat a, a nugget, it makes a, an extra sound. It goes like, chung! And that's the, probably my favorite thing, because it, it plays them in a rhythm, and whenever you eat, the rhythm goes chung! And that means that the score underlines what happens in gameplay. In fact, there's a few other sounds, like when you use a mine, I mean, when you... When, you, when a mine explodes or when a freeze mine explodes. That sounds way different, for example. I, I really like that one. So originally these little sound bites were made by Swain, the guy who made Blockhead the series, and recently he's been on Jontron and had a game jam on there. So that's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> it's a really interesting system, but I probably should have done more with it. Probably should have had like an overarching loop that plays in accordance with the beat. Because the beat is like, yeah, that would be the drums of a song. But then you probably have more interesting stuff going on than like just drums. And you can see how it gets repetitive. Even though I never get bored of that sound when you eat a pellet. Uh, that ka -chong! <laughs> So cool. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you play good it sounds better than if you don't play good. Cause the Otherwise it'd be quite boring, wouldn't it? To just hear those three sounds over and over again. <laughs> well, it's four if you eat... If you eat the crumbs, yep. Yeah. Well, the sound was decidedly and purposely simplistic. And I think it, it fits well enough for what it is. And so are the graphics. The graphics are just like outlines and then colors. There's not even shading. I mean, it, it would be hard to do shading because the, the things can rotate. So the shading would be weird unless it's, it's all facing straight towards the camera. I guess if it was all in 3D, it would look beautiful. <laughs> But even in its simplistic look, you can see that there's some really bizarre things going on. At first it starts off simple enough with lobsters and, and the packy guy, but he is kind of weird looking too. Why is why are his eyes facing that way? Why does he open his mouth so wide and close it so far? <laughs> pretty strange, huh? Oh, and when he dies, he brutally splats. That's pretty cool. And then later on you, you see, oh my god, what the hell are these things that lay eggs? They, they look really bizarre, don't they? And then you have plague mines? 
the green mines. Yeah, why wouldn't you have mines that spread a deadly plague? Good thing you're immune to it, so you can actually spread the mine, uh, spread the plague, and then eat the corpse of what you've <laughs> what you've killed with the plague, and then you have a trail behind you that spreads more plague. That's how it should be, right? <laughs> I wonder if that was Edmund's influence. I mean, not like specifically, but you know, just cause, cause he made weird stuff and I'm like, yeah, I could make a plague mine, why not? What was I thinking with that one? Well, pretty interesting concept, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty, it's probably the most powerful one too, cause you can kill all the enemies. You just have to infect one and then it'll probably spread. Oh shit, that's actually pretty, <laughs> pretty, Appropriate for 2020, isn't it? Uh-oh. Yeah, you play as an orange weirdo who who spreads the plague by by having it in his body. Uh-oh. Watch out for that one. Political commentary. The art style also changed over time. Like specifically in like three years later, I guess I decided that I had to change things. So you'll see me here have two different videos. One which is the Newgrounds version, which is the old version. And then I, my own private files, which have the new version, where I actually don't like the graphics as much. I thought I would be replacing these lines and make them more artistic, you know, but then it turned out it, it didn't look as good. Guess I shouldn't have used that version everywhere. Well, I had it on my website, oh, no. but it doesn't work there anymore, I guess. I gotta get a new website eventually. Right now my website just links to new grounds when you click on games. So you're gonna play it on new grounds. And sadly when you press like submit high score or whatever, the game really lags, so that's too bad. I probably should go back and fix that eventually. Uh-oh. <laughs> well if flash games even remain playable, I guess I'll have to try it with the new new grounds player whenever they release that one. I guess it's easy to forget all the things I put into this game. Like, for example, I had no idea it had 35 levels. I guess it, it took me kind of a while to make all of them. I mean, they're not like super advanced or anything, but I guess there's still quite a lot of them. And then if you want to play the game, you have to play all 35 of them without dying too often. Otherwise, you'll have to start over. And I think it's a cool system. Life systems can be interesting. And, well... It took me a while to get back into the game and actually beat it again. And before then there was this small, incredibly small YouTuber <laughs> called Only for Genius who uploaded a whole box row of it and then told me about it. So that's that's the version with the Newgrounds version that I've been showing. And then my version is the other version, the one where the colors are, where the, where the outlines are less black. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard, I guess. It starts out having it so that you get so far and then every once in a while you get even further, but then there's a level that's just really hard. Like that level where you have to eat the eggs before they hatch. Oh my god, you have to be really fast for that one. Or does that depend on your frame rate? Oh god, I hope not. <laughs> well, I guess it should depend on your frame rate a little, because your frame rate depends on, uh, says how fast you can move. Hmm. Well, that's also bad. Shit. Well, if I were to remake at any point, it would be based on time, not on frame rate. And then everything would be better. And you'd be really having to scramble to eat all those eggs before they hatch into whatever weird spiders these are. Yep. I don't let more than two of them hatch or else you'll never get the rest of the greens. Hmm. Anyways, Reese is busy animating a whole cartoon with me and Monkey Jones. So get hyped for that one, which is why I had to mostly edit this video. And probably the next week one too. Next week I'm gonna cover the game that inspired me to make Pac in some very subtle ways, I guess. And you'll be surprised, it's not Pac-Man! Get hyped! It's Zafrasoft Rocks, everybody! It's a, a video on a really old game I used to play. And actually, I still play it actually. In fact, it, it still occupies my waking thoughts. How am I gonna beat that level? That level is so hard! <laughs>